Who hasn't heard of Walt Disney? I'm sure no matter which corner of the world you live in, you've heard of this genius American cartoonist, entrepreneur, and animator who gave the world some of its most beloved characters in Mickey Mouse and the Club. But did you know there's only one other legend in the field of animation who's considered to be equal with Walt Disney? Osamu Tetsuka is God in Japan. Born on the 3rd of November in 1928 in Toyonaka, Osaka, Tezuka was a Japanese manga artist, cartoonist, and animator, par excellence. His incredible body of work, new techniques, and imaginative worlds and characters, along with the signature redefinitions of genres, elevated him to the status of father of manga and the godfather of manga. He is also considered the Japanese equivalent of Walt Disney, who inspired him during his early years. His work extended across cartoons for children, literary art, and genkeka, or adult manga. Tetsuka was responsible for ushering in what is commonly known today as the manga revolution in Japan, with Treasure Island, a story inspired by Robert Louis Stevenson's English literary classic of the same name. This story is about a boy by the name of Kenichi, who finds a map of Treasure Island his dead father leaves him, and then sets out to sea and bows everything from stormy weather to pirates and other challenges including getting kidnapped in a squash-buckling bid to find lost treasure. First released in the form of a comic book, New Treasure Island left youngsters astonished at Tetsuka's style and inspired them to become manga artists, a path-breaking work of art at the times. Today, it's seen as just a simple, ordinary adventure story. When he created New Treasure Island, Tetsuka had not acquired fame as a manga artist yet and had based his work off the original idea of Saka Sashama, one of the most renowned manga artists in Osaka at the time. Did you know that Saka had in fact edited a lot of Tetsuka's work, cutting at least 60 pages out of the original draft, while also rewriting several times? Tetsuka then had to rewrite the entire book with the corrections incorporated by hand. Thanks to its post-war editions with Americalized illustrations, the book gained immense popularity and became a bestseller with more than 400,000 copies. Over time, Tetsuka would leave an unparalleled legacy from his output that spawned the most influential manga series including Astro Boy, Princess Knight, and Kimba the White Lion, and the adult-oriented series Blackjack, Phoenix, and Buddha, all of which won several awards and were universally acclaimed. With Tetsuka's death in 1989, an immediate impact was felt on the Japanese public and artists. It was a personal loss for many, who regarded Tetsuka as their mentor, and a museum was constructed in Tarakumazaka dedicated to his memory and life works. Tezuka left behind classic works, some of which haven't even been released yet. In contemporary times, when you watch modern anime, you can quickly relate to the unique style, vibe, and world of anime art with bright, colorful renditions and graphics that complement the moods and emotions of your beloved characters perfectly. Many such characters and storylines have become international phenomena over the past three decades, even in the United States, where anime began gaining popularity in the 1990s. Signature anime styles were later adopted even by American creators and artists in a bid to stay loyal to the indigenous art form. For example, anime characters are usually portrayed as having large doe-like eyes with brightly colored hair. The characters' movements and gestures, as well as their emotional responses, are magnified or in many cases, exaggerated for a bigger dramatic effect. Such techniques have been observed to have influenced Western cartoon characters too, such as Betty Boop, created by Max Falchner, and of course, Prince Mickey himself. When one thinks of Japanese indigenous art and influences, be it language, martial arts, songs, or food, have helped develop a huge global interest in learning everything related to Japan. And much credit goes to anime. The main reasons why anime stands out today are due to its unique ability to grow with its viewers and the interesting and colorful depictions of human emotions. It's no surprise that anime has no limits when it comes to creating content that inspires the audience to think out of the box and create something new. Anime, like cinema, has been able to develop and evolve according to the fast-changing and progressing technology over the decades. In the 1960s, American companies dubbed anime or Japanimation as it was referred to in English, 
with corny dialogue and dial-ups of overreacting that tag-themed gorilla flicks. By the 1980s, the quality improved a little, for which you had to shell out dear dollars for a VHS rental. Yep, VHS meant exclusively in the 80s and the early 90s. It was the thrill of being able to watch your favorite anime multiple times over, and this led to the popularity of the art form in the US, as well VHS, meant you didn't have to schedule your day according to the broadcast timings, and you could enjoy your favorite show on your own terms, but as I mentioned, it came at a price. One had to rent tens of tapes to watch an entire series in one go, unlike DVDs or Blu-rays, that with a single purchase did the trick for you. Anime fans and connoisseurs who wanted both quality and quantity gained much from this latest technology boom, as did Japanese and American anime studios, and produced a multitude of content through the late 90s and early 21st century. High quality laser discs were imported from Japan in stockpiles, and enterprising fans would even use professional subtitling services to translate episodes from non Japanese speakers. With the advent of the internet, with most of us still on dial up, it was next to impossible to download anime back then. Faster connections over time facilitated easier ways of sharing and distribution, but it still took hours and hours to download a single 23 minute episode. Streaming today has made viewing and sharing anime fast and reliable. Most importantly, free thanks to advertising. Today, most titles are available within 24 hours of broadcast in Japan. One can now find anime that aired within the week. The days when fans had to wait endlessly for the season finale are long gone. With the nearly instantaneous exhibition, anime continues to cast its magic spell in literally every aspect of a young man's life, from his clothing and diet choices to parlance and nomenclature. The amazing thing is that no one can know what anime will bring every week, and that is now the hardest part. Stay tuned, as in the next episode, we explore the global impact of anime and how the turn of the century and how streaming has helped anime reach the four corners of the globe.